I attempted to catch a shiny Pokemon in every game on the Switch within 24 hours. But there's an issue. If I'm not able to catch a shiny Pokemon in each game, all of my shinies are going to be released and I have to start over from scratch. I can use any shiny hunting method I want, but can't move on to one game until I catch a shiny in the previous one. The first game I had to shiny hunt in was Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, which I actually hadn't opened since 2018. Originally, I was going to go for only fire type Pokemon, but we'll save that for the next video. But because of that original thought, the Pokemon I was going for was Growlithe. This Growlithe is going to be in Route 8. Now, a lot of you guys might not know, but a lot has changed about shiny hunting and let's go because back then we believed getting a catch combo of 31 is all we needed to do to get the odds boosted. That was completely wrong. The shiny odds are only going to be boosted in the first Pokemon that spawns immediately after the combo started. So instead of waiting in the air with the flying type Pokemon like Charizard, I had to make sure I caught every Growlithe that spawned to keep my catch combo going. This was not as fun as I thought it was going to be. For this hunt, I needed to stock up on Pokeballs and Lures, which brought my odds down to 1 in 350 with a 31 catch combo. Oh, easy dubs. What the heck? Dude, something's up there. Like, I want to see it. Oh, there it is. Come back, Arcanine. All right, we're at catch combo 7. So far, 11 minutes in. Not too bad. What the frick? Don't run away. Come on, bro. Guys, guys, don't tell me that throw wasn't excellent because it literally said it on the screen. What the hell? What are the chances that Charizard is shiny? That I was still struggling to find a shiny and my time was running out. So there are five Pokemon games on the Switch, right? Which would mean on average, I had about four and a half hours to complete my hunt. And that four and a half hour mark was coming a lot faster than I thought. But not just that. There came a point where I ran out of Pokeballs and money. So I needed to completely start over from scratch and get my catch combo back up. And at this point, guys, I was already six hours in and my chances were looking very slim. Especially, I forgot to mention, guys, I don't even have a shiny charm in this game and that's when it happened shiny eradicate bro come on dude okay well i have to catch it but damn dude what the heck full on shiny eradicate honestly guys i was a little disappointed when i did see it because i was really hoping for the growlithe but we'll take this shiny all day a 1 in 4096 shiny to start off this hunt at the six and a half hour mark Let's go is officially complete. Oh, by the way, guys, we added a new emoji for members. You guys know who this is. Guys, I put a freaking poll out there and nobody knew who this was. Like, what the hell? Guys, we have Steve the Sunflora merch officially on the channel. We have like a cool hat. I think the hat's my favorite one. The Steve the you know what hat. I don't want to get Nintendo ninjas on me. Now, the next game to move on to is going to be Pokemon Sword or Shield, which offers many new shiny hunting methods compared to Let's Go. I decided to opt for a random shiny and diamond. Dynamax Adventures. So with the shiny charm, Dynamax Adventures raise your odds to 1 in 100. So despite the fact that each quote unquote reset takes about 20 minutes, I felt it was my best chance to make time because I spent a lot of extra time in Let's Go. Now, I actually know a ton of people who have never got a shiny this way. So if that's you, let me know in the comment section below. Dynamax Adventures are hit or miss, man, but I had to take my chances here. Unfortunately, I didn't have any legendaries that were easy to go up against already on my list. So I decided to go random. Eventually, I did run into an Articuno, which is going to be an easy legendary for us to take on. Again, I'm just trying to find the easiest stuff so we can get this done as fast as possible. And thankfully, the Cantonian birds are pretty weak and just like that after about an hour and a half let's go we got the shiny let's go i don't need more pokeballs we got roselia let's go dude seven hours and 40 seconds in we got the shiny and sword and shield there we go we got shiny roselia not my favorite shiny since i actually have a ton of them but this will do for now and with that pokemon sword and shield is complete if you guys are enjoying this video so far make sure to leave a like and subscribe my next game is going to be the gen 4 remix brilliant diamond and shining pearl just like my let's go experience i also don't have the shiny charm in this game because let's just say guys this game is absolute ass but i do have I do have the Poke Radar, which makes shiny hunting exponentially easier, assuming my chain doesn't break. So you guys might be asking, bro, what are you talking about? Chains breaking? Well, what, what does this mean? So to explain things simply, the Poke Radar method allows us to increase our shiny odds all the way to 1 in 99 if we are able to get our catch chain that high. So basically, I got to catch Pokemon and continue to catch it until it reaches 40. Easy, right? The problem 
is your Pokemon catch chain could just randomly be ended before then and we have to start all over again. There is a 7% chance each time I catch a Pokemon that the chain can break. So technically, according to A-Drive, there's a 5% chance I even make it to 40. So let's get this done. I decided the Pokemon I wanted to go for was Mareep since I just think it's pretty neat. So after reaching 13 Mareep caught, the grass has sparkles. Oh shit! <laughs> Let's go! What the heck? We just got it like that! Oh my goodness, dude! Okay, we need to catch it. We need to catch it. We need to catch it. No way, dude. We're already gonna... Dude! This one took me 11 minutes of shiny hunting. That's crazy. Now, at full odds, my chain was only up to 13, which meant this grass had the odds of 1 in 2,259. Somebody in the comments, when this video is done, put all that math together and show me what my odds are at. Something like that, please. Now, with my shiny Marie Pencil, we have completed BDSP. If you guys have gotten a shiny in 11 minutes or less, then you're crazy. Now, finally, making it to the good game, Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now, in Legends Arceus, the overall spawns are going to be full odds or charm odds, but if you completed their Pokedex entries, those stats go up. In the overworld, their odds go to 1 in 2048, and in mass outbreaks, they're 1 in 152. So obviously, I thought to myself, the easiest thing I can do right now is do a massive mass outbreak. And when I check, there's a ghastly outbreak. I quickly regret my decision. So some outbreaks are actually gonna be easier than others. And I forgot that Pokemon actually attack you in this game. I also forgot about fall damage. So I said, fuck that. And decided to reset the outbreak by leaving and coming back. But thought, hey, let's check this corner really fast. And then I hear the sound. <gasps> no way, dude. <laughs> get over here. How do, I, how do I engage in battle? <laughs> Dude, we got the shiny and how how long? How, how long was that? <laughs> Hold on, I, I need to catch it. I need to catch it. Just like that, dude. Just like that, we got the shiny in Legends Arceus. <laughs> Three minutes into my Legends Arceus hunt, I find myself a shiny overworld rufflet. Now, I actually didn't check if I had completed the Pokedex entry on this rufflet or not. I don't remember at all, but I could have. But let's just say this one in 2048 right there. And this rufflet deserves a ton of love for being my quickest hunt in the video. So we had a quick photo shoot. And like that, Legends Arceus is complete, guys. And we're making great time. There's no way I lose this challenge. Or will I? The last game on the list is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And with this game, like in Legends Arceus, there are going to be outbreak hunts. The difference between this game and Arceus, however, is that there's actually no shiny sound when the Pokemon appears overworld. So we need to be a little bit more careful since the game is, let's just say, a little bit less refined. The game is, this game sucks. Another thing that can actually help us with shiny hunting in this game is the act of using Urban Mystica to increase your shiny odds with the sandwich. However, I don't have any Urban Mystica since Terra Raid battles make my eyes bleed. Thankfully, my buddy Mark doesn't care about his eyes and he got a ton of Urban Mystica and he's able to make me a shiny hunting sandwich. It increases our odds for water type Pokemon. Now, since I have the shiny charm, my odds go from 1 in 4096 to 1 in 683. Hmm. Dude, what if, hold on, what if this Cramorant just like doesn't spawn here? Oh, it is, it doesn't spawn. <laughs> Unless it spawns up here. Is there another water type? Oh my God, I wanted the Cramorant. Well, whatever. Gotta make use of this sandwich. Increase these magic card spawns. Corefish. Uh, I think I'm gonna just go for Wug Trio. What does shiny Corefish even look like? Hmm. They're the same picture. Oh, there we go. There it is. Shiny Wooper to complete my quest, dude. Just like that. And like that, it is done. It took a little bit over eight hours with the majority of it actually being in Pokemon Let's Go. If you guys want to see me do this challenge again, but instead limit me to colors or types, let me know in the comment section below. But until then, I'll catch you guys in the next one.